Hi, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this tutorial, we will talk about the cultivation process of rice crop. Rice has different names in different languages. In Hindi, it is called Chawal. The scientific name of rice is Oryza sativa and it belongs to the family grasses. Rice is a cereal grain crop and the plant grows from 2 feet to 6 feet tall with a round jointed stem, long pointed leaves and edible seeds born in dense head on a separate stalk. Rice crop grows best in hot and humid climatic conditions. Basically, rice crop grows where there is abundant water supply and prolonged sunshine is also available. The ideal temperature for the cultivation of rice crop is between 25 degrees centigrade to 35 degrees centigrade. However, rice crop can tolerate a temperature up to 40 degrees centigrade. Let us now see the different stages in the cultivation process of rice crop. The stages are land preparation, seed sowing and raising nursery, transplantation, irrigation, weeding, pest and disease management, booting and flowering and harvesting. Let us now see the first stage that is preparation of land. Rice can be cultivated on different types of soils. However, the most suitable types of soils for cultivation of rice are clay and loamy soils. Clay and loamy soils can be easily puddled into mud and the soils develop cracks in drying conditions. The soil for rice cultivation should be ploughed to attain a reasonable depth of 10 to 20 cm with varying cloth sizes. The weeds get killed by burying or exposing the roots. Tools such as moldboard plough, disc plough, chisel plough can be used to plow the soil meant for cultivation. Make the first pass along the edges of the field in a clockwise pattern. For the second pass, move counterclockwise and finish at the center. Irrigate the field with 2 to 3 cm of water for 10 to 14 days or until the soil is soft enough. Keep the field Submerged for ploughing to soften clods and to decompose organic material. Adding fertilizers in puddled field after irrigation or along with irrigation as a basal dose will help in enriching the soil and increasing its fertility. Apply one third nitrogen, the whole of phosphorus and potassium before the last puddling. Depending on the cloth size, another tillage operation can be done using implements. Additional primary tillage operations are generally done with rotovator. Now, depending on the soil and climate type, puddling should be done 10 to 14 days after the primary phase. Puddling the field with rotovator and harrowing breaks up the soil clogs and incorporates weeds, straw and stubble into the mud. This hastens their decomposition. Pass the harrow crosswise to break the soil clogs. The second pass should be done lengthwise. If the field is flooded, Reduce the depth of the water to locate uneven and high surfaces of the soil before harrowing. The land preparation is now complete. Let us now see how to sow the seeds and raise nursery in the field. Before we move on with the seed sowing stage, the seeds should be soaked for 24 hours in fungicide solution to prevent soil bone diseases and also to give resistance to the seedlings. We will now dry the seeds in shade for sowing. The required area for raising nursery is 1 cent per acre 
and the required seed rate is 25 kg per acre. Pre-sprouted seeds are sown on the raised nursery bed. Apply a fine layer of manure. Spread sprouted seeds sparsely. Irrigation may be commenced on the fifth day after sowing and continued up to the seventh day to a depth of about 5 cm. After this period, irrigate the nursery continuously to a depth of about 5 cm in order to control weeds. Seedlings are ready for transplantation from 20th to the 25th day after sowing. Seedlings less than 20 days old are too short to be pulled from the soil. The seedlings are held between the thumb and the forefingers and as close to the base as possible. They are pulled gently and easily. If too much mud sticks to the roots, it is washed by shaking the roots in water. The convenient size of seedling bundle is 5 to 8 cm in diameter and this is made by tying the bundles with any soft material. The seedling should be protected from drying. Arrange the bundles in the field for transplantation now. Let us now understand how to transplant the seedlings into the field. Rice seedlings grown in a nursery are pulled and transplanted into puddled and leveled fields. Rice seedlings can either be transplanted manually or with the help of machines. Manual transplanting is cost effective and most suitable for labor surplus areas and for small rice fields. Manual transplanting can be done in fields with less than optimal leveling and with varying water levels. Transplant 2 to 3 seedlings per hill at shallow depth with optimal spacing 20 by 20 centimeters or 22.5 by 22.5 centimeters. Handle seedlings carefully to ensure their fast revival and rapid growth after transplanting. This is advantageous when weed control and intercultural operations are going on in the field. The transplantation stage comes to a close and we will now understand flood irrigation in the cultivation process. Continuous flooding of water provides the best growth environment for rice. After the transplantation of seeds, Water levels should be around 3 cm at the initial phase. The levels should gradually increase to 5 to 10 cm with the increase in plant height and remain there until the field is drained 10 to 15 days before harvesting. Continuous flooding ensures sufficient water and controls the growth of weeds. Lowland rice requires a lot of water. On an average, it takes 1432 liters of water to produce 1 kg of rice in an irrigated lowland production system. Water should be retained in the field throughout the growth period. This results in better yields. 
Let us now talk about the weeding practices. Manual weeding is essential to remove the weeds closer to the rice root zone. The first phase of weeding takes place between 15 to 21 days after transplantation. The second phase of weeding may take place 30 to 45 days after the first phase. Keep a thin film of water and allow it to disappear. Avoid drainage of water. This will control the germination of weed seeds. Let us now discuss how to apply fertilizer. The application of fertilizer to the crop is essential in managing soil fertility. This helps in normal growth and development of plants. A number of crop problems can be related to inefficient management of nutrients and nutrient imbalances in the field. Due to variation in soil fertility, rainfall and climatic conditions, a common dosage of fertilizer cannot be recommended for all regions. A level of 30 to 40 kgs of nitrogen per hectare in Kharif and 60 to 80 kgs of nitrogen per hectare in Rabi appears to be the optimum dosage for the tall indicas and double that level for the high yielding varieties on soils of average fertility in the southern and eastern regions. Where sunshine is available for longer hours, higher dosage of nitrogen is beneficial in the Kharif season. Maximum efficiency can be obtained in the upland rice by applying 50% nitrogen at 45 days age and the rest at the boot leaf stage. In order to obtain better results, a full dosage of phosphorus, potash and a half dosage of nitrogen should be applied before last puddling. The remaining half dosage of nitrogen should be applied in two equal dosages. The first one at the tillering stage and the second one at the panicle initiation stage. Let us now understand pest and disease management in cultivation process. Rice crops are majorly attacked by stem borers, army worms, leaf folders, rice hispa, rice case worm, rice gandhi bug and plant hoppers. To control stem borers, spraying of pesticide endosulfan is recommended and to control army worms, spraying of quinal phos is suggested. To control leaf holders, spraying of pesticide acephate is recommended and in the same way to control rice hispa, the spraying of pesticide carbaryl is recommended. To control rice case worm, spraying of pesticide endosulfan is recommended and to control gandhi bug, spraying of quinal phos is suggested. To control plant hoppers, spraying of pesticide quinal phos is recommended. 
The major diseases that can attack rice crops are rice blast, brown spot, bacterial blight and sheath blight. To control the rice blast disease, spraying a fungicide mancozeb is recommended and for brown spot disease, spraying a fungicide bavistin is recommended. To control bacterial blight disease, the spraying of bactericide agrimycin is recommended and to control disease sheath blight, the spraying of fungicide mancozeb is recommended. Let us now see the booting and flowering stage of the crop. The booting stage is followed by the emergence of the panicle from the protective flag leaf sheath. During this period of rapid growth, the plant's demand for nutrients is high. The flowering stage begins with the emergence of the first anthers from the uppermost spikelet on each panicle. Flowering begins among the uppermost spikelets and continues for approximately 15 days. Never apply fertilizer or pesticide during periods of active flowering as the pollinization process is extremely sensitive and can easily be disrupted by the presence of agrochemicals. Stop irrigation and applying fertilizers and spraying chemicals for 15 to 20 days in the field. The crop is now in the grain maturation stage. Once the grain maturation stage is in, the crop is ready for harvesting. Let us now see the harvesting stage in the field. Harvesting is the process of collecting the mature rice crop from the field. Harvesting of paddy includes cutting, stacking, threshing, cleaning and winnowing. Good harvesting methods maximize grain yield and minimize grain damage and quality deterioration. Harvesting can be done manually using sickles and knives or mechanically with the use of threshers or combined harvesters. In manual harvesting, allow the harvested material to dry under hot sun for 2-3 to three days. After that, arrange all the stacks in one place for threshing of seeds from the stacks. Generally, tractors or bullocks are used for threshing of seeds. To avoid breaking of seeds, thresh the seeds carefully. After threshing the seeds from stacks, the remaining stacks are collected for dry grass and used as cattle feed. Collect all the threshed material for winnowing process and take measures to control grain loss on the field. Winnowing process, lighter material such as unfilled grains, chaff, wheat seeds, and straw can be removed from the grain by using a blower, air fan, or by wind. Winnowing recovers only the heavier grains. After winnowing the threshed seeds, what follows is the collecting of grains and storing of the grains in gunny bags. Machine harvesters are considered better 
and these help in reducing the loss of grains. The combined harvester combines all operations, cutting the crop, feeding it into threshing mechanism, threshing, cleaning and discharge of grain into a bulk wagon or directly into bags. Straw is usually discharged behind the combined harvester. Harvesting, threshing and crop cleaning are done mechanically. Cutter bar cuts crop while the conveying system feeds the crop into the threshing and cleaning systems. Threshing drum tip speeds the threshing process. Rice grains are collected into bags. An average yield of rice crop is 4.5 tons to 5 tons per hectare. Thank you for watching our tutorial on the cultivation process of rice crop. Stay connected with tutorialspoint.com to watch our tutorial on the cultivation process of a different crop. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.